Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're going to be looking at law enforcement judo technique. Uh, this is something that I discuss from time to time, um, the importance of police training, right training, and not just very formal training like, as Jocko Willing says, uh, 5 to 10 hours uh, a year, but rather be very efficient in your grappling both in stand-up and on the ground, and to control and prevent as much damage as possible because that is very important so today we will be looking at two cases um, they can be demonstrations but also can be very well uh, real life scenarios the first one is going to be a hostage scenario where here you can see the cops are swarming in um, it can be again a demonstration they surround the man the assailant he has uh, the woman with him so the arm with the weapon is immediately stripped off away from the woman and also being taken used to pull into a huge ogoshi notice how he kept holding on to the arm so the assailant can land safely on his side wrapping the calves uh, into like a calf slice or a classical calf slice so they cannot move so here is your ogoshi i want you to notice the sleeve hand he pulls it towards him wraps the hand around the waist and throws and keeps holding on to the sleeve. When you hold on to the sleeve, no matter how big or how powerful the throw is, they're going to be landing on their side. Um, the impact is much, much less than if you just let go. And that will help uh, to keep the safety of your uke or here in this case, the assailant. I did a video on the Vietnamese cop who did also to Guruma. He did it and just let's go completely. The guy was knocked out. I'll leave it uh, towards at the end as a link so you can watch it. And also how you wrap up the calves like a Hisa Hishigi is also a very classic. Let's see it here again. So they cannot have an option uh, to push with their legs up and try to make for an escape. This is nothing new as you can see here from the old Koryu books of Tatsushin Ryu and Tenjin Shin Ryu. The photo from uh, the one that's on top. You can see the legs wrapped up and pulled towards the head so to prevent an escape and also get a tap so here um, you can still see the legs are still being restrained uh, the knee is on the rhomboid or the real death not so much on the neck the guy can still move his head he is uh, now handcuffed and being picked up and escorted into the car of the police i would say this is a very good police work from the uh, disarming to the throw up until the arrest and to escort him to the police station um no need to use what's on your belt if you have good grappling and good situational control this next one here i'm sure I, you've seen it uh, all around uh this uh person either using a club or a machete i'm pretty sure it's a club and being hit with ippon seonage as the um, arm of the weapon is coming down they are hit with ippon seonage so ippon seonage it's one arm seonage uh, loading on the back and then cutting down with the hand it's not like morote where you use two hands but it's rather you hook and then you throw over your shoulder uh, it's not a hip throw here as you can see yes you block them with your hip and your back but you cut down with your arms it's a tewaza a hand technique according to the kokyo of kodokan judo now let's take a look at it in the context of nage no kata because it is very similar to the situation that we saw with the policeman again whether it's a demonstration or not i do believe this is very much effective and needed to be learned so here you can see the tento a strike to the top of the head um, Tori takes the momentum of the strike uh, blocks the wrist turns and then chops down with his arms uh, as in Ippon Seonage like a sword and then getting the attacker on the ground here is the strike and uh, downward strike to the tento the top of the head and from there you take you block with the wrist but not like a complete pause but just block it as you are deflecting it in a sense and then you load the arm over your shoulder and you cut down as you are seeing here and you bend over which will lift uke onto your back and the arms are used to cut down 
to complete the throw also notice how you are still grabbing the sleeve so they can land on their side here you are seeing it's a mistake that you hook them on your bicep but it should be on your shoulder it does work but the old school principle is to load the arm completely on the shoulder and also notice you are still grabbing the sleeve so they can land in a safe way with not so much impact and also injury free or as much less injury as possible here let's see it again similar to nage no kata the ippon seoi nage one last time he's attacks boom ippon seoi nage and then turned over so um again these are the two examples if you want to uh, click off you can obviously do that but uh, this is something that i always advocate for is good quality training very similar to henner and Hiron gracie where they talk about that the better the training the more uh, control you have over any situation whether it's on the ground where you see all these uh, jujitsu cops that are trained by the gracie uh, academy or here you can see the stand up where you are actually still controlling them even though the, um, the throw is very much of great impact you can still control their landing via holding the upper body correctly and thus helping them land safely and from there because you have control of the arm you can easily rotate them onto their front side and from there you can carry out a safe arrest but when you don't have the right training uh, you see a lot of footage like three cops on the ground with an assailant and still they cannot control him and then they would have to use whatever is on their belt and that's where tragedy occurs when there is good quality training uh, a lot of the stuff that we see are just unavoidable uh, i'm sorry they are avoidable and they can be just done without but when you have lack of training and sending someone who is just terrified and you have someone who's resisting arrest um and then you don't know what to do then your last or your only resort at this point is to use whatever is on your belt i know there is a problem with uh, police brutality and uh, people having their lives ended uh, really in an unnecessary way as you can see from all over the news but with proper training you have not only a lot less death cases but also you can uh, I would say prosecute or punish the cops correctly because uh, when you assess the situation and you see that they have used unnecessary violence even though they could have controlled it with good grappling and no need for firearms then you know that cop is not eligible for the street and they are a hazard on the community and not so much for their um, protection and i know a lot of police officers that are there to serve their country to serve their community and do the best job and they are uh, trainees in bjj judo and wrestling and they're out there doing a great job and uh, keeping everyone safe so um this is a very important topic for ethics for control for keeping everyone uh, safe in the community including the cops themselves and also the assailants not all the assailants are innocent and of course not all of them are just hardened criminals a lot of a lot of times a lot of things go wrong and that's what we're trying to see less and less so proper training is one good way to go about it i cannot control everything through judo obviously um, no one can but still it's a step in the right direction so if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening